Hey guys, so uh, we're here with Jimmy Bins Jr. How's it going, man? Doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome stuff. So uh, tell me how you got involved in mixed martial arts. Well, I I, um, I came from a boxing background. Uh, my dad was an attorney who represented the WBA. Well, first he was athletic commissioner of Pennsylvania. Oh, um, cool. Then he was the only legal counsel for the WBA for 15 years. Um, represented Don King, Mike Tyson, a lot of different people in the um, world of boxing. And I learned a lot of my uh, stuff that I put to use in MMA from boxing. Um, I started off, uh, I supervised a lot of fights for WBA when I was like starting at 17 years old. Uh, I also uh, just, just saw the growth of MMA and at first was probably one of the Critics saying this is no, this isn't going to last. This isn't going to last just because of my background in boxing. How sure. much love yeah. I have boxing. You know, what I mean, a lot of people who are involved in that boxing world were kind of like taken back from it because it had such an impact so fast, and boxing never had something like this to go up against. And obviously, as you see, what's happening today it is taking a, a natural growth over it, and it's going to keep on going that way. For sure, man. For sure. So uh, you're an agent as well as a promoter? Yes. Um, what happened was I, I started Matrix Fights uh, with Phil and Rick Miglaris. And okay. they uh, have – Phil, they're, they're obviously accomplished grapplers, uh, black belts under Helsin Gracie. And Phil, has, Phil and Rick have 32 affiliate schools all over the world called Team Balance. And uh, we were childhood friends, just being from Philadelphia. We, we were from basically like the same neighborhood. And we ended up, we were just neighborhood friends. And they obviously ended up doing whatever they did in grappling and opening up a gym. And I, I grew up uh, in the life that I did with boxing. So sure. after, a, after a lot of partnerships that went bad for me, um, unfortunately, we came together and we said, hey, why don't we form a company together? And we're now on our sixth event. And uh, I also have a management company called Bins Management. One of my marquee guys is a guy named by the name of Tim Carpenter, okay. who I know the show is somewhat familiar with <laughs> over yes, the last couple yes. of days. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Okay, so um, let's just talk a little bit about Matrix Fights then. Um, going on the sixth event... How many years has this company been around? Uh, we've been around for, we're coming up on probably like our, probably from when we formed it, our fourth year. Okay. Uh, we uh, formed it and we took a little bit of time just to pick the, the right timing of the show, the right, the right player, the right fighters. And uh, I did have a lapse where um, I didn't do a show and that's because I had the, uh, director of operations job for Bellator. I, I ran their summer series um, nice. back in when we did our first show in Canada, our first international show. And uh, I was a little bit busy with that. I was basically living out of my suitcase. So I had to kind of not so much put Matrix on a back burner, but just um, put it aside for a second. And then uh, I, I, I don't like to do shows half halfway. Right. I like to either put my all into it and really get into the promotion and uh, we've been very successful, knock on wood, from a local standpoint and realizing that we're a local show but trying to be the best possible regional show out there. And we're obviously waiting for that TV deal, which which is pretty close. But in the meantime, we're putting on great, great fights uh, and uh, creating great fighters and giving them great opportunities. Awesome stuff, man. So uh, let's start breaking down this Matrix 6 fight card. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. So uh, you tell me where you want to start, and uh, we'll start there. Um, well, I mean, I mean, from from the top, um, we have Wilson Hayes, obviously a renowned uh, black belt, a Lloyd Irvin black belt. Sure. Uh, he's a he's a Philadelphia guy. Um, he's fighting an, an opponent in Billy Vaughn, who comes to fight every fight. You know, he's 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 not someone that shies away from an opportunity. He always always a tough kid you know i mean sometimes the best part about mma uh mark is that records they don't emphasize records as they do with boxing and, and as long as they keep that it'll keep the sport very interesting because right. boxing a lot of that 
you could have guys that are so talented, like the Emmanuel Augustus of the, of the of the fight world, and even for that matter, like from my my knowledge, like Mickey Ward didn't have a beautiful record. And there, there's a lot of guys that they were great boxers that didn't have good records, never really got a shot because they based so much on the record. You know, yeah. whereas in MMA, if you go on a five fight win streak, you would be right back in the UFC, which is the way it should be. You know, and it makes it a lot better from from a promoter standpoint to be able to get you know guys on the win streak and bring them back to life and you know sure have, you know it's it's a lot better. So we have uh, Wilson versus Billy Vaughn, and then we have uh, Dave Brantz versus Marcus Fitch, tough kid out of uh, from from Ohio, <clears throat> and we have a recent signee that I just picked up as a kid by the name of Ben Ritter. And he's a kid from Philadelphia, but runs a charity out of Peru. And he's 5 0, 185er. And uh, he's a new guy that's going to be on the scene. You're going to be hearing his name a lot. And uh, we also have the pro debut of Julio Arce, who's a uh, huge amateur standout from Tiger Shulman's. And we also have Muna Holland, who's obviously a Big uh, girl fighter from Tiger Solomon's. Okay, great stuff, man. The girl mm-hmm. fights are usually uh, top of the card, in my opinion. They're always outstanding fights. Yeah, they they definitely draw the attention the the attendance up for sure. Okay, and now on this card, do you have any amateur fights, or is it strictly a pro card? No, we we in. in Pennsylvania, you have to do a pro am, so we do have a amateur card. All of our amateurs are uh, local guys, and we try to. I, I, that's my amateurs are pretty important because I try and build my show. Uh, I try to create our own stars. Sure. As opposed to like a lot of these guys, they end up trying to just use a name from a guy who's fought in the UFC per se. And I'm not saying that. I'm against it. I mean, obviously, Dave Branch is a UFC veteran. Uh, obviously, Wilson Hayes is a Elite XC veteran. And, you know, but I think a lot of these promotions, sometimes they just get a name and they just want to throw in the UFC and yeah. use, the, use their name. And, right. and I'm really, really, really against that, you know? Yeah, we're having uh, Mark Pavlich up next after you and the Maximum Fighting Championship owner and they pretty much tried building their name off of uh, UFC guys. But the last few shows, they've totally gone the other way, using homegrown talent. And obviously, I yeah. think that's the way to do it. Yeah, it just has more worth for your show, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, let, let, let the UFC be the UFC and let Bellator be Bellator. And I want Matrix Fights to be Matrix Fights. And someday, knock on wood, that I'm going to have my place where it's going to fit in its own own space. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the same level as the UFC. You know, it, it, it can create its own worth. And I think that if you have that that mindset to create you, you, your own worth of your own show, you, you'll be much more successful as, as if you realize what kind of show you are and you don't try and make it bigger than what it is. Okay, so um, obviously regional promotion. Is there any way for people to uh, watch it that aren't local? Uh, not right now, but we it'll be up uh, right after the fight. It'll be up, and up, and you'll be able to go to my website, matrixfights.com, and you'll be able to see all the action from the night before. Okay, cool. And uh, what about tickets? Tickets, matrixtickets.com. You'll be able to get all the tickets, and if you're in the Philadelphia area, you, you wouldn't want to miss it. If you're an MMA fan, it's probably one of the it's, – it, it is the best show in the um, – eastern region of the United States. So um, please stop by if you could. Okay, a question I had for you. From the time you decide I'm going to do another show to the time it actually happens, what time type of uh, time frame are we looking at? My next show will be in October. Okay, so how long does it take? Like usually when you say, okay, I'm going to start booking my fighters, to the time the fight actually happens, I I take my um, right now. I, I try to take like th- at least three months in between each show. Sure. Um, I like to get guys comfortable with the matchups that they want. Um, I like to put together a crowd pleasing fight. 
I like to, I, I've been getting a lot of new partnerships where I just grabbed, uh, there's a, a casino in Philadelphia called the Sugar House Casino. They've just come on board with us, one of the biggest casinos in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have a partnership with Brian, Charlie Davidson, Delilah's, uh, Z-Bar, uh, Rebel. We have a lot of um, local 98, uh, IBW. Um, okay. We have some serious partnerships where we try to promote everyone's brand. And get the fight, get get it around the fighters, and get people familiar with the fighters. So when the fighters go to the next level, people are getting together like, "Hey, that's I saw Timmy fight in Matrix. Now he's fighting in Bellator. Um, I saw look 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 how look at where he's going." And that's that's like we're creating more of a fan base. We're also educating a lot of people in Philadelphia that have been boxing fans for so many years. You know, I mean, sure. the sport is so brand new. So on so many levels, it has so much growth. Um, there's a lot of obstacles too with that, Mark. I mean, you have every Joe, Dick, and Harry watching Jerry Maguire and saying, "I'm uh, I'm an agent now." Right, right. I can imagine. And, and leading a lot of these guys into fire, you know what I mean, and not them not being ready for it. You sure. know what I mean. So it's like the people say, "Well, what, what, why should like? What do you know about management?" Well, there's one of the easiest ways to put it is there's. There could be great fighters, and they're, they're only great fighters if they're brought up correctly with their career. And just because they can beat everyone doesn't mean they have to fight everyone right away. There's fights that make sense at right times. There's managers that make decisions based on their financial reasons and get the guys hurt. You know what I mean? Then there's guys that, that – so sometimes it's like I'm trying to explain things to people – Tell him blue in the face, and some people listen, and some people don't. My my best example is Timmy Carpenter. He and I worked together. You know, I mean, we, we just clicked, and he gets it. Correct. So he trusts me. I trust him. We've had a very successful relationship. We've made a lot of money together, and he just re-signed a new deal with me for three years, um, another three years, and, you know, I mean, he's, he's very happy, which makes me very happy. You know, it makes me to know that I'm doing my job. And sometimes, sometimes the next guy might sound a little bit better than me, but I know he's feeding them bullshit. I don't have bullshit. I just tell him the re- reality of it. This is what you're going to get. And, you know, if the guy wants to listen, he's going to be, he's going to be happy because I'm going to have a good outcome for him. 